Hello and welcome. I'm Carol Deshane, your certified life and business coach, intuitive, a marconic, multidimensional energy, light worker, practitioner, and teacher. I've been talking this month about retirement. I've been talking about when to decide, where you're going to go, looking at your finances, what you're going to do. But ultimately, the whole point of retirement is that it's the next stage of your life. It's a stage that people look at as though it's the last part of your life. So sometimes people go there with this fear that it's the end of their life. And a number of people die right after they retire, like within days sometimes, or weeks, or months, even when they have plans to do more. So what is it about that? They don't look for the joy. They, like, give up. And I think part of it is that people, especially men, it seems have their whole being and their identity as part of their job. So when they are either forced to or decide it's time to retire, they no longer have their identity. They're simply kind of swinging in the wind. They don't, they feel like their purpose is gone in life. The thing is, is that we need to help those people realize that their life purpose their reason for being is not their job. It's why they do their job. It's not being a fireman. It's why they're the fireman. It's not being the cop or any other helping profession especially. It's why do you do it? Beyond, I need to make money. I need to help my family. Why is this thing so much ingrained in who you are? Because if you can see that, then you can bring that with you to retirement. Instead of saying, I'm no longer a fireman, I have no purpose in life, and then they die because they can't help people anymore. Maybe their whole reason for being is not the fire. Maybe the reason for being is actually helping people. So maybe they can help volunteer as to help fire victims. Maybe they can go in to a, a different kind of job just for the fun of it. A volunteer, help clean up after fires. I mean, I don't know what you can do. I'm not, I don't know why I chose firemen. <laughs> but there are other things you can do to help people if that's the reason why you're in there. So look behind it. If you're really sorry and you can't find any joy in going into retirement, make sure you check out why. Look into if it's the job you're giving up, then make sure you figure out what it is about that job that makes that much difference to you. So you can, like I said, bring it into your retirement with you. You can find something to do that will replace that job and you'll really love it. It'll be maybe a volunteer position. Maybe you get, you'll be some sort of a, a consultant that you get paid or maybe you don't get paid. If you don't need it, it won't matter, but it'll feel really good to be part of something different and yet still what you want to do with your life. If you're single, it won't matter, but if you're married, you may want to talk to your spouse about some of this I'm going to be talking about because it should be a joint decision and yet they need to know how you're feeling. So don't be afraid to share, I really don't want to retire, but I'm being forced into it or I know we want me to retire because you want me to retire. I'm not really ready to go, but this is why. I feel like this job is who I am. If I let it go, I'm afraid that I won't be that person anymore. And you have to use the word afraid if that bothers you, if it's too vulnerable, but that's what it really is. It's fear that you will be less because you're no longer part of your job. I would love to help people like that because I know there's so much more than that. And it's so much deeper into it than what they let go. So because of that, I want that to be the first thing you think of if you are not wanting to let go and not retire. Sometimes we're forced because of where we work. It used to be more obvious that you would be forced out. They had a certain age you had to retire by. They still do in some particular, I mean, sometimes it's like sports, your body just breaks down. You're not as young as you used to be. Some last longer than others, especially football. I mean, it's so hard on your body that people get injured and then finally they just can't work anymore. But sometimes 
some people go quite a ways longer than others. So just be aware that if you don't want to let go of your job to find joy in your retirement, that you need to figure out what it is. Number one, okay? And then make sure that you know where you are, where you stand with anyone else in your life. Are you with a spouse, a significant other? Where are they on, with you on retirement? And to find the joy, you need to make sure they're on the same page you are. If they're still working because they're younger than you, then make sure, or just because they won't let go, make sure you find things that you love to do while they're working so that you're busy, but don't get so dis disconnected from them that they feel like you have a new life and they're not part of it. That you're having this joyful time without them and you don't really need them anymore. Make sure that doesn't happen. So talk to them. Say, I'm thinking of joining a couple things during the day and, and tell them what it is. So ask them if you want, if there's some stuff coming up but not you like to do it. Maybe that's something they'd like to join you on. And if it isn't, maybe you don't do those things when they're when you can be together. If they always go out and watch sports or or go hang out with the women or the men or whoever it is, then maybe you go with them or maybe that's their night out. That's their beer drinking night. Or that's the night that the ladies always get together or whatever it may be. So it's not something new. It's just you're not getting together on that night. So really think about that. When you have a spouse, significant other, or someone, make sure you connect because you can't find the joy unless you are really working with someone else sometimes on what you want to do. If you want to move or not, make sure you have especially that one. Talk in detail with that person. I'm thinking when I retire, maybe we move near the kids. What do you think? And if they go, wait, I got five more years to go and I can't work remotely, and you go, fine, well, when you retire, then maybe we move closer to the kids, because by then, maybe the kids will have moved, <laughs> but maybe you want to be closer to the grandkids, so then you discuss it, and the person goes, you know, I wouldn't mind retiring a couple of years before I was planning on it. Why don't we do it in three instead of five? So have that discussion. Be open. Just say, hey, this is what I'm thinking. What do you think? Let's have a chat about it. Let's plan our future together. I can't tell you how hard it is to be married to someone that will not talk about things like that. You can't have discussions with them, then that's an issue. Because you want to be able to make decisions together and not be the only one making these decisions. Because if you are, you may find that the other person gets really annoyed with you, that they feel like you're taking over their life, they might get bitter. Just be sure that you have as many open-ended discussions as you can with them until they feel like you're on the same page. Some people will not get on board. They will not want to discuss. So do as much as you can to make sure that they feel included. Because if they're not happy, your joy will not be really very big. Let me just tell you. Okay, so that's that. That covers work and not wanting to let go. And that covers significant other. I talked in the last one about what you might want to do. Have to's versus want to's. Make sure that in order to find the joy in the next chapter of your life, that you know what you want to do. Stuff will come up and you can add them to your list. But make sure that you have some of that covered so that even if you know that you're so stressed out at work that you need two months to sleep and to recover and to recoup and to have maybe a reading times and just sleeping in times and whatever it may be, that's okay. But you want to make sure that you have more than that planned whenever you're ready. Maybe like with me, I probably will be auditioning for more theater because it's stuff that I love to do. If there's something that I want to do, I'll be out there more. I'll be finding groups that I want to hang out with, meetups that may, be, may be sound interesting classes I might want to take, to learn more, to feel more a part of the world. Do whatever you need to do to find your joy. Maybe your joy is gardening, so you, but you want to be around people, so maybe you go to a community garden and help out there. Maybe you start going to a, a center that's a horticulture center, and you volunteer there, because you may not be a gardener there, but maybe you can be a docent. 
Maybe you can be someone who's around the gardens because they make you feel more centered or more peaceful. So know what you love to do and then try some new things. Things that might fall into the, God, I love this. I find so much joy here. Or to the, God, I'll never do that again. But at least you know. Make sure that you are there for you. That you find these things that bring you joy. Because granted, it will probably be the last chapter of your life. Even if the last chapter, like for my dad, was 20 years because he, he retired so early. He had 20 years of good years. They, my parents went on trips once a, once a year or so, sometimes every other year, that were cruises because they loved to cruise. My mom loved not getting off the boat and not having to cook. And my dad loved the group that they went with. And he could go out, get off and see all these different ports. So that was their favorite thing to do. Make sure that you find what you love to do. Make sure you make this last part of your life the best. It can be the best part of your life, or at least a joyful part of your life. You have to take advantage while you're feeling healthy. And if you're not, do what you can anyway. Find the joy in whatever you can do, whatever is there. Some people have issues with mental, where they are losing some of their they're not necessarily senile yet, but they're losing some of their memory and they're getting forgetful. But I know somebody, for example, who is bound and determined to have joy anyway in her life because she says, well, if I can't remember what I did, I'm not going to worry about it. It'll come back to me or it won't. If it's important, I'll figure it out. And that is the best way to think because sometimes you can force yourself to have more memory and sometimes you just, you know, you can't. It's something that's just happening. Do what you can to find your joy. You're totally worth it. And you deserve to have the best life that you can. Know that for yourself. Thank you for joining me here today. I hope you like what you hear. If you do, please subscribe to my YouTube channel and click on the bell notification so you know the next time that a video is posted. And if you'd like to know more about me, about Marconic Energy, about energy space clearings, or about life coaching, you can go to my website at www.connecttojoy.com. That's connect the number two joy.com. And you'll also find the other direct link for my podcast, Living Your Limitless Life, which you can find on Stitcher, iHeartRadio, just about any of the of the of the podcast channels, as well as going to directly to my website. You can also listen to it. Until next week. I hope you do remember and you know that you deserve all good things in your life and you are already enough to have that joyful, limitless life that you desire.